Over on Jaguar Gator 7, a new baseball video is out. In this video, we talk about the time in 1998 that the Chicago Cubs had a major feud with USA Today. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. A while ago, I did a video about an absolutely terrible play from a Detroit Lions game from week 13 of the 1977 season against the Baltimore Colts. That was an insanely dumb decision that the Lions were the beneficiaries of, and you can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, to make a long story short, with 14 seconds left, the Colts were pinned deep inside their own territory on fourth down, leading the game 10 to six. So what should you do in that situation? Well, the logical thing to do would be to take the intentional safety and run around in the back of the end zone for a bit. Take the clock down to seven seconds or so, and now you lead it 10-8. But it's not like the Lions can get a field goal, because as long as you don't do something stupid, they'll have time for one play and one play only, which is a Hail Mary. Instead, for some inexplicable reason, head coach Ted Marcherota decides to punt the ball away, potentially setting up a return setting the Lions up in great field position, or in the worst case scenario, setting up a block punt for a touchdown. And sure enough, the Lions block the punt, and Leonard Thompson scores a touchdown to give the Lions a 13-10 lead, stunning the Colts crowd. During this game, the Lions got bailed out by some awful coaching, which is a nice change of pace from what happened the previous week against the Green Bay Packers when they did something absolutely dumb that you've probably never seen before. But for this, we head up to Lambeau Field for this NFC Central battle, in a game that, while it meant nothing to the Packers, as they were anemic in every sense of the word, was absolutely huge for Detroit. As things stood, the Lions, with three games left, were two games back of the St. Louis Cardinals for the final wildcard spot, and two games back of the Minnesota Vikings for the division lead. They had a five and six record. Amazingly enough, they have a shot at the playoffs despite their recent run of form, where they dropped four of their last six, including a bad 31-14 loss to the Chicago Bears in front of their home crowd on Thanksgiving. However, they've got absolutely no room for error. You've got this game against an atrocious team that has scored just 98 points through 11 games, or under nine points per game and against a team that you beat the first time you met back in week five. Win this game and beat the Colts and Vikings the next two weeks, and you might actually have a chance to do this and stun the football world. Lose this game and it's over, no questions asked. Your season is done. An eight and six record might get you in, but a seven and seven record, even if you win out after this, sure as heck won't. The bad news for the Lions was that on this muddy day, as you could probably tell from these lowlights, they couldn't get anything going offensively. Quarterback Greg Landry was having an absolute stinker back there, as he threw for just 115 yards with no touchdowns, two interceptions, and a passer rating of 34.6, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. One of those picks was even a red zone interception. Detroit had just one play on the entire day go for more than 20 yards, and the ground game was also struggling, only averaging 3.2 yards per carry. Anytime you've got under 200 yards of total offense, good luck winning a game, and the Lions were trailing 10-9 as a result, with the nine points coming off of a touchdown and a bizarre decision by the Packers with three minutes left to take an intentional safety. However, the good news for the Lions was that they still had a chance. They were only down by three. They were getting the ball back following a defensive stop and had 32 seconds left to drive down the field and potentially win the game. This one's not over just yet. First down, and Landry takes a deep shot down the field for J.D. Hill, but it falls incomplete. That was the moment right there. You had one-on-one -on -one coverage, but it falls incomplete. That stinks, but look, You've still got some time. Second down, and Landry going deep again. And once again, 
it falls incomplete on the pass intended for Rick Kane. Confused as to why you're sending your running back who's under 6 feet out on a deep pass like that, but whatever. Third down after the Lions get called for unsportsmanlike conduct and move back a few yards. And oof, oh man, that's uh, yeah, that's not good. Landry's a seasoned veteran. He's in his 30s. He's been in the league for a decade. He was a former pro bowler and vote getter for MVP. You gotta know that you cannot, under any circumstances, take the sack there. At this point, a win looks incredibly unlikely. But you've got 14 seconds left. It's gonna take a miracle for head coach Tommy Hudspeth and company to pull this one off. But you've gotta do something. It's a long shot, as you've got fourth and a mile. But this is your season on the line. And the Lions decide for this final play to make a quarterback change. As they take out number 11 and put in number 10, Wilbur Summers. Alright. That's interesting, but there's got to be a reason behind this. Maybe Landry was shaken up on that last play. Maybe Summers has a stronger R, or something along those lines. Seems odd, but maybe that is number 11, and I just got it wrong because his number just got a bit muddied up, and I'm reading this all wrong. Let's just double check the roster, and wait a second, wait a second, time out. That's the punter. That's the punter. That's not Greg Landry. That's not even a quarterback. That's the freaking punter. Why are they punting the ball? Why are they punting the ball? Really not a whole lot you can do. They know you're going to throw. The field conditions are awful. Rock ticks off, and this is going to be it. The ball game is over. Wait, what's even worse? I just want to make sure my eyes are right before I say the line and dissect this. Run that whole sequence back one more time. He is dropped at the four-yard line by Bob Barber, number 70, driven into the end zone by <laughs> Dave Roller and number 78, Ezra Johnson. But while they want that safety, they're not going to get it. He was knocked back into the end zone by the defensive lineman. 14 seconds left, fourth down, and the punting unit comes on for the Lions. Well, you got to give Landry credit, too, because it's... Really not a whole lot you can do. They know you're going to throw. The field conditions are awful. Rock ticks off, and this is going to be it. The ball game is over. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away, that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. After this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Detroit Lions head coach, Tommy Hudspeth. At the end of the 1977 season, Hudspeth was fired as the head coach of the Lions and was replaced by Monty Clark. I'm shocked, I tell you. I'm shocked that a man who did this and thought that this play was a good idea, got fired. Because this might legitimately be one of the worst plays in the history of the NFL. Nothing about this, and I truly mean it, makes any sense whatsoever. Tommy Hudspeth was a horrible coach, and you can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And this play more than anything, exemplified just how terrible he was at this. So with that being said, Let's take a look at why sending the par out there with 14 seconds left when you're down by one point and then not even calling a play is a horrible idea. Usually, I will do a pros and cons list for calling this play versus calling the alternative. But let's be honest. At the end of the day, football is about winning and losing. You're down by one point. By choosing not to call a play, there is no best case scenario. I don't even know what it would be. The best case scenario is that you literally lose the game. And that doesn't seem like a good best case scenario. It's almost like if someone's got a gun to your head and says they'll only let you free if you correctly answer their riddle. Option one is to say nothing and boom, you're dead. Option two 
is to just guess anything. Say something. Might it work? I don't know. Will you have the right answer? Probably not. But at least you got a shot. There was nothing good that comes from calling nothing in this situation. And it's not like the Lions didn't have time. Seeing as the clock stopped for everyone to get reset, and the Lions not only had enough time to switch their entire offensive unit out for the special teams unit, but then, with the punter set with six seconds left, had enough time to let the clock run down. You had quite a few options here that weren't this. You could have tried another deep ball and just told everyone to go deep and hope for the best. That's something. You could have even taken the intentional safety. Sure, you would have been behind 12-9, but then you get an onside punt. And if you recover that, you've got better field position to try a Hail Mary. Or if the Packers commit a penalty, you can move up another 15 yards and try the game tying field goal. It's a convoluted solution if you go this route, but it's at least something. There's at least some logic with your season on the line to doing that. There was no logic here. You were waving the white flag for no reason in a one point game, where if you lose, you miss the playoffs. Again, I'm not saying that by going for it here, you're going to win the game, or you're going to convert, or anything along those lines. You had 14 seconds left with a running clock pinned by your own end zone on a terrible field in awful weather. Your odds were super slim. But you know what they weren't? They weren't zero. You know what they were by choosing to do this? By taking your quarterback out for the punter? And then to let the clock run out? Literally zero. I've got nothing else to say. Seriously, I'm at a loss here. Hud Speth didn't comment on this decision afterwards, nor did any reporter ask him about it afterwards. Probably because they were so fixated on his decision with five minutes left and the team facing fourth and one to going for it instead of trying the game tying field goal. Which I don't even get, because I had no problem with that decision. Seeing as your field goal kicker, Steve Mickemeyer, who was hitting just 42% of his kicks that season, was downright awful and would be kicking this on a patch of mud. But why no one asked him about this, I don't know. This might be the most frustrating final play I've ever seen, because there wasn't even a play. There was no attempt here to win the game. This was a coach with everything to play for, not even trying, and conceding defeat. It wasn't the first time that season that a team conceded for no reason late in the fourth quarter, as it happened in the Giants-Falcons game, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But this was the worst of them. How can any fan root for a team, or give money to a team, or how can any player trust a head coach that doesn't even try to draw up a play here and doesn't even try to win the game? It's embarrassing. It's pathetic. And this is one play where if it happened today and the team in question was competing for the number one draft pick and they were down by one point and did just this, Roger Goodell and company would be all over them and might strip them of their draft pick. And rightfully and understandably so. But I can't even say that here it was taking, because they were playing for a playoff spot. They were playing to win the game. That's what makes this make no sense at all. It was just outright stupidity. So what do we learn from all this? If you're trailing in a ball game by one possession, and your options are to try anything, and to try nothing, then choose the first option. You never know what's gonna happen. Maybe you get a pass interference. Maybe you convert and get a broken tackle. Maybe you do the intentional safety situation like I said, and get a few bounces to go your way. Point is, if you try something, you have a shot no matter how slim it is. And at least no one can fault you for not trying. If you're down by one possession, and the game is for your playoff lives, then for the love of God, don't do this! There is nothing more that needs to be said. Tommy Hudspeth is either a spineless coward or an incompetent buffoon. And either way, he did not deserve to be a head coach in the NFL. And I think after this and after that 1977 season, that that was abundantly clear.
because when all of these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.